ดังนั้นเราจะเรียนเรื่องของเรื่องของเรื่องของเรื่องของเรื่องของเรื่องของเรื่องของเรื่องของเรื่องของเรื่องของเรื่องของเรื่องของเรื่องของเรื่องของเ
who does the bees belong to? The eyes are his. It's on his land. It's not borrowed. Who does the bees belong to, Mom Christmas? Belongs to you. But Gary says he belongs to God. Belongs to nature. Belongs to nature. And nature is created by God. So he belongs to God. Then if the bees, if he is right, if he is right, if the bees belong to God, to whom does to the honey belong to? Belongs to you. To what do you mean to everyone? <laughs> the bees are not yours if he is right. The, the hive is yours. The land is yours. The meliponi culture is yours. Right? You built the boxes. You didn't steal those timber. Alright? And you bought it. You paid him in full. But who does the bees belong to? You said it belongs to God. Right. Okay, because it belongs it belongs to, to you. Okay, why can't you call them back when they abscond? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So if they abscond, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, you can't call them back, right? So it doesn't belong to you. If the bees do not belong to you, to whom does the honey belong to? It doesn't belong to me. Yes, it doesn't belong to you. But you take the honey, you put in your bottle, you sell, and you take the money, and you buy more hives. Did you ask permission From to God. get the honey which is not yours? No. no. So we, we are all... We are stealing. We are stealing. Yes, all of you are robbers. <laughs> <laughs> but when you eat, you say grace. Right? That is actually asking permission from God. Right? Same thing. Please remember to say grace when you are taking the honey. It's not yours. For heaven's sake. Think. Remember that. Okay? It's God given. Be thankful. So you must care for what's giving you the health and the wealth. Right? I'm not a preacher, I'm not a pastor. Alright? I'm a lover of nature. And I'm a conservationist. And that's what Jew aspires to be. Yeah, I'm talking to him, I'm talking to his pastor. Okay? We all believe to the same God. He says that I don't eat certain things that you eat. And you don't eat certain things that I eat. Right? Okay? But all of us still say grace when we eat. So same thing, when you take the honey, please remember where it comes from. So take care of the bees. Right? And when you care for the bees, Right? You study them. Why do they go to the coconut flowers? Because when a spadix of coconut opens up, there's hundreds of flowers. You know? Okay. Now you compare to the bees that are going to these flowers, they have to hop from one flower to another. Have you ever seen the bee going to one flower and come back home? No. 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 They go to another flower, another flower, you know. And I was telling them, you know, how far they have to fly, how tiring it is. So thirsty when they come back, they drink up their own honey. Yeah. And when you open up, ah, I got no honey. I got no honey. As though it's my honey in the first place. <laughs> right? So, I'm trying to hit at some conscience here, right? It affects you, I'm sorry. But that's what it is. Please realize that. So you got to give them less work. That's right. Then they can produce more for you. Put it nearer. Alright? Instead of asking them to hop from one flower to another, which will tire them even if it's near, give them the palm flowers. One opening, they just hop onto one, they crawl. Crawl and pick, crawl and pick, crawl and pick. Full, they fly home. Then you have lots of honey. That's how, through Beescape, we talk to them, we communicate with them. That's how we manipulate, as you are asking, okay? So that they will produce more. And when they produce more, they have been inspired by God to produce more than enough. They are the only animal species that take more than what they need. Do you realize that? Besides squirrels who take and keep for the winter, right? Yeah.
Now, these are the only insects that will take more than what they need. They keep on taking and keep on taking and keep on taking. Now, if you make it difficult for them to take, they will just bring, drink up their own reserves because they took it for themselves in the first place. Right? If you want something from them, you got to help them. you got to provide for them. They are basically workers for you. If your hives, your hives are the factory to produce honey, those bees are workers. They are working for you. What salary did you pay them? What are you giving back to them? Okay? So the only way you can give back to them is ease of forage. The ease of picking up food for themselves. Okay? Now, if you make it difficult, I am not paying anything to you. You are slave drivers. You are robbing. Okay? So, this is what you need to implant in your conscience. Then you will be real good beekeepers. And if someone else does it wrongly, even though he's bigger than me, I don't care. He's wrong. I'm going to make him right. Okay? You've got to do the same thing. If you want to learn from me, you and you go back and teach, because like mom, you're going to go back to teach your beekeepers. Tell them the same thing. Be firm. Be... I mean, I don't want to be rude. <laughs> We're not going to be rude. But you want to get it into them, you know? Get it into here and get it into here. That's the best part. You get it into here, they will remember. Right? So you provide the palm flowers, they only need to crawl. When they crawl, no much energy spent. You want to preserve the energy. And when they come back, give you more. Right? So also, you are protecting them from the predators. Because if they go to normal trees and all that, birds are perching there, birds can catch them. Whereas under the palm tree, very rare you get birds that will catch them. So these are the things you want to look into. This is what we call beescape. You are landscaping for the bees. Right? Now, in landscaping for humans, you want beautiful flowers, you don't want to plant makaya, which is thorny and... No, for the bees, that is what they want. That is what they can get. It's very low, abundant of nectar. Put it in front of the hives. Plant the makahia. So that the two-legged predators also don't go in the middle of the night to steal your hive. They'll step on thorns. <laughs> okay? It's also defense for you. Alright? Okay. Any questions on that? Uh, yes. Is there a study sir, on vertical forage? How high can they... Forage? Yeah, there are studies uh, in the sense that some uh, species, I've seen even Biroi in uh, Matas Nakahoi where they made a made their nest it's a feral hive in a dipteraca tree dipteraca trees are very tall very tall and this one was like uh, 15 uh, sorry, 5 meters 15 feet, 5 meters above so, if they are five meters the nest definitely they'll be foraging up there okay so um, it depends on the type of vegetation that is abundant majority in that kudia farm is mostly dipterocarps mostly and a few shrubbery below right but he's got his hives uh, on stumps yeah equally spaced quite far apart yeah and I would presume they might even go six meters. By that observation alone, I can tell you they'll go six meters. Now, in my region, we have colonies of the Canifrons, which is the highest. They go up right to 15 meters. Okay? Two reasons there. There we have bears. Bears that climb and sun bears. Yeah? And so... By nature, to avoid these predators, they build high, so the bears, the bears can still climb, but by the time they climb, not much damage. Those that are down below are just simply thrown apart. So, there's another defense that they do. Those that cannot uh, build the nest high up, they make their nest very thick in volucrum. It's so hard that the bear's claws cannot, uh, because the volucrum is made from resin. 
diptero cup resin, which is very thick and very hard. And for us, even to get into a funeral hive, we have to like break the thing with a hammer, claw hammer, that if we want to if we want to rape the forest. Okay, the answer. All right. So exactly uh, how high the uh, fly, we are only given some published papers of in Brazil. They found a new species right, in the belly of a woodpecker. And this woodpecker normally uh, get their food or make their nest way up to 20 meters high. That's in the, I think, Amazon of Brazil. So that is the record that we know of. They found it in the belly of a woodpecker. They've never seen that species, right? Because all the while, we, they only saw what's on the ground and what's within their reach. So one, I don't know, somebody caught a woodpecker, dissected and found that species inside. So there they named the species after the name of the woodpecker. I can't remember. But anyway, we're talking about the height, yeah? So it's up to that height. But I don't think that applies here because our bees are very small, yeah? Okay. Uh, right. So, okay, now this one, this level two. Level two, um, basically, it's structural shrubs, bananas, papaya, siliconias, creepers that, you know, creep on the wall or, or climbers. And... Uh, These creepers also applies for the ground covers, those like Morning Glory, Kangkong, Kamote, those are ground covers. Yeah? But if you put trellises, they climb up, so they become level two. Yeah? So it's not necessarily the species that determine your level, it's where it flowers, the level. Mm -hmm. There is no specific height, or two feet is level two, no, it's not like that. It's basically these are strata levels. Okay, these are strata levels. If you have palms which are newly growing and no other trees, we are just flowering, say about, I don't know, eight feet, 10 feet high, that's your level one because that's what you have, all right? But if you have like this, coconut trees which are 30 feet, 40 feet high, that is level one. So it's not specific height, but they are strata levels. Right? Okay. Then uh, you got shrubs and animals, which is basically your tile or knee level, you know, and which is also basically most of the level of the hives that you do, so that you can just go out, take care. And ground covers is are those they are covering the ground. Okay. Uh, there's also Okay, so these are the four levels of foraging. Do you have any questions on this? Just a clarification, I thought that level two on creepers and climbers are so-called vines. Yeah, you can call them vines. That's correct, or the level four ground covers are called the scandent shrubs. Okay. You can, so it can be the same species. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be the same species, but because of its habit of growth is creeping on the ground, we call it ground cover, it's covering the ground. Yeah. But if you put trellises and you have to climb up, then it comes to the level of level two. So it can be, it can even be at this level if you have low climbers. Huh? Any questions? Um, yes? Question. Because there's this um, assumption that uh, stingless bees light path is 45 degrees up. Okay, okay, carry on, carry on. Carry on, carry on. So, uh, 45 so, degrees up. Yes. That's why you were asking, so what if uh, we uh, place the colony under a coconut tree so it will not go to the, the flowers? Because... Okay, what, what do uh, the others think? Some notions, 45 degrees uh, facing the entrance, only the 45 degrees 
uh, from the entrance. Okay. Because uh, do you agree with that? Uh, there are no valid. Uh, so they say if it is true, no, that there are studies that when they do the pollen analysis, they just yeah. consider the 45 degrees along the path of the stingless bees from the entrance. They yeah. saw. No? Yeah, I saw one stingless bee 45 degrees. The pollen here. He went out that way, was looking for pollen, pollen, no, 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 hey, they found here. Then he went back. <laughs> you tell me now, is that 45 degrees? No. Or is it all? Around the world and back 45 degrees. Correct. Which is which? You tell me. What about the others? What do you think? 45 degrees? No. No, <laughs> depends where the food source is. Yeah. But uh, what's their determining factor to uh, like go to a food source? Uh, do they travel on a uh, straight trajectory or they follow a scent or do they... Okay, from my experience and also I woke up at 5 in the morning I was in Balai Buhai and uh, I found that I had the opportunity to study because there were so many hives and there were so many bees, 3 billion bees, you know, imagine, right? And we found that they love the avocado. Yes. They well, love the avocado. avocado. You know? So I was there and 5.30 they were out stretching their wings. So I had my slow-mo on, I could see they were like... You know, they were going like that, they were stretching their wings. You know. 5.45 they were at the avocado. Okay? And there are 3,000 hives. I don't know how you want to measure with a compass 45 degrees of each hive. And they were all facing the east. The avocado was in the west. Huh. What 45 degrees are you talking about? I do not know. It's my own observation, okay? And I check it out myself. That's what I found. So there is no 45 degrees. I asked them. No, sir, they say sometimes we take 48 degrees, sometimes 54 degrees. You think about it. <laughs> um, I also have a question. Um, because I forgot where I read it, but... Uh, stingless bees uh, will have um, bees that will forage for nectar and bees that will forage for pollen and bees that will forage for propolis. Is there like a, a determining factor for them to um, like 20% of the colony will uh, forage for nectar? And 10 yeah, that's a good question. May I sit? Yes, yeah, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> it's a very good question. Uh, actually, everything is worked out by the queen. The queen tells them, uh, hey, we are short of pollen, everybody goes up for pollen. And if we are really, really short of pollen, even the males go up for the pollen. When the males are actually not equipped to carry pollen, because they are high tibia. Yeah. If you saw, yeah. I showed you, the mm high -hmm. TPR is uh, it's not cubiculate mm -hmm. as much as the workers. Mm -hmm. And if uh, <coughs> they have uh, some new expansion, they need some nest building materials, that's when they go going forage for more sap and resin. You know? And nectar is the regular thing that they will go for. Uh, it also see, depends see, on the season. That's, that's it. Uh, they said that uh, bees will collect nectar only for energy. So how come there are uh, periods that there are more nectar and there are periods that... Then the day that you mean, I don't know who the day are, are wrong. <laughs> That's it. Because if you yourself can observe that there are more nectar, then it is actually dependent on the seasons mm -hmm. and the type of forage that you provide. So, the day are wrong. That's, that's all I can say. I mean, that is my, my take on it. Um, and also, why is it that 
uh, the Bicol um, Bicol bees are I don't know uh, is, it, uh, is it correct to say that because of the rainfall, number of uh, rainfall in Bicol that makes the uh, the bees gather more because they know that tomorrow it might rain? Yeah, that could be true. Normally it's the season. So whether you're taking into account the total rainfall for that yeah, particular period... Yeah, and here period, in this area where the, the weather yeah. is more or less stable, they are less inclined to gather. I wouldn't put it that way. But I would agree in the sense that the rainy season you might find a difference in the nectar collecting habits. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, some species go out in the rain, some species yes. do not. Yes. Some species, by the sound of thunder alone, they already rush back because of the barometric pressure has gone down and they rush back, they know it's going to rain. Uh, but whatever the case may be, uh, there is what's called honeydew. You know what's honeydew? Have you heard of honeydew? Some of them have you've heard of honeydew. Mm -hmm. Honeydew are in, in three uh, sources. Yeah? One is flowers where that is too small for the bees to go in, but too fat for the bees to bite into. Okay? They wait for the dew to fill up and the nectar Right, rise up, okay. So what they are taking is diluted nectar, mm. right? So in terms of volume, you will see more. Yeah. All right. So like the mist. Who was talking about the mist? Okay. So the mist sometimes provide for more honeydew. Yeah. Honey produced from dew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So another honeydew that you will get is from what we call extra floral nectary. Like acacia, at the base of the leaf, there are nodules that produce um, phloem, okay, which is similar to nectar, right? But we call it extra floral nectary. Extra floral meaning something out of the floral, but you get nectar. There are many things which produce nectar out of the floral, like the nepenthes uh, cap, right? It has extra floral nectary there because that's how it traps insects and cichlus bees are sometimes trapped mm -hmm. because of the nectar at the lid of the monkey cup yeah, you know? and uh, they also um, sometimes um, what's called nectar which they take from fruits some fruits produce um, some juices which oozes out from the fruits which they, they can take. Okay? These are all honeydews which which produce honey uh, but diluted honey. But mixed into their cup is still honey. Right? And these are the reasons that in certain wet weathers you will get extra honey. Okay? Can you dig it, Mum Adeline? Yes. Alright. That's why I noticed like this. they're falling right and right yeah. on the ground. Then they're honey, just Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, it's best. Now we're going to talk about, uh, basically, now we're going to talk about maintenance. Yeah. If there's no other questions about this, I'm going to talk about what Question Mom thinking. Yes. The, 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 the dew and the water on the flower. So, if we water the flower, is it advisable to water the, uh, the our plants? Water the flower or use the... It's okay, you just you do your normal thing. So, not all uh, not all flowers, when you water, it will retain water. Yeah. Here we're talking about mist and dew, which is very fine particles yeah. of uh, water, <laughs> fine water molecules, you know? So, which, uh, which gets into the corolla of the flower. When you water them, sometimes your water droplet doesn't even go in. Yeah, right. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's part of a natural process. You don't have to add or subtract, you know. It's a natural process. Yeah. But it goes to answering why certain wet seasons you get more honey. Uh, you get more honey in volume 
but not necessarily more in concentration.